Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna look at six worked examples to show you how to do problems involving capacitors and RC circuits. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous theory videos covering capacitors and RC circuits and the time constant, as watching these videos will help you try the questions in this video. So let's get started. Question one says that the circuit below is used to charge and discharge a capacitor. The battery has negligible internal resistance. The capacitor is initially uncharged. Vr is the potential difference across the variable resistor and Vc is the potential difference across the capacitor and these are labelled on our diagram here. We've also got two terminals or two points A and B and we've got two points where the switch can be at point 1 or at point 2 and we've also got a 100 volt supply. Part A says is the position of the switch at 1 or 2 i.e. on the diagram in order to charge the capacitor and in order to discharge the capacitor. So in order to charge the capacitor, first of all, we need the battery or supply to be connected to the capacitor. So to allow the current to flow along here, we need to have this switch open, which means that it needs to be connected at position one. So we can say that it's position one for part one. Part two is, is the position of the switch at one or two in order to discharge the capacitor. So to discharge the capacitor, we would move the switch to position two so that the current that was initially flowing along here and building up on the capacitor plate here would actually now start discharging and moving off the capacitor plate in the backwards direction this way and then it would flow along this path and when that switch is closed it would move along here and then up and back through the resistor and back to this side and this way we would have the capacitor not connected to the power supply so that the current can flow off the capacitor plates. So we could say position 2 for this one. Part B says to sketch graphs of VR against time for the capacitor charging and discharging. So VR, remember, is the potential difference across the resistor, and we're asked to show numerical values for the maximum and minimum values of VR. Well, for the charging capacitor, first of all, we should have a graph that looks like this, of VR against time, where we've got 100 volts as our maximum voltage. And that is because the voltage across the resistor will initially be at 100 volts. And then as soon as you move the switch to position 1 to start charging the capacitor, the voltage across the resistor will decrease over time. For a capacitor discharging, we would see that the graph of VR against time would show the voltage across the resistor increasing over time, i.e. doing the opposite to what the capacitor would be doing. And you'll see it starts at a potential difference of 0 this time, and it increases over time until it reaches its maximum of 100 volts. Part C says to sketch graphs of VC against time, i.e. the voltage or potential difference across the capacitor against time, for the capacitor charging and discharging. We're also asked to show numerical values for the maximum and minimum values of VC. So for the charging capacitor, first of all, it would look like this, where we've got VC against time, and we've got a potential difference that increases from zero over time until it reaches its maximum of 100. And then for the discharging capacitor, we've got the voltage across the capacitor decreasing over time until it reaches zero, where it started at 100 volts. D part one says that when the capacitor is charging, what is the direction of travel of the electrons between points A and B in the wire? Well, it helps to look back at the picture for this. So when the capacitor is charging, the switch is at position one here, just like shown, and the current will flow along in this direction through the capacitor, through the variable resistor, and then it will reach B first and then pass through A. So we could say that the current flows from B to A. And part two, when the capacitor is discharging, what is the direction of travel of the electrons between points A and B in the wire? Well, it's just going to be the opposite. And just to show you the picture again, this time we would move the switch from position one to position two to discharge the capacitor. And this time the current would move off the capacitor plates in this direction, flow up here, along here, and up through the switch when it's closed, and then along it and hit A first, and then it would move through B, and back down to the other side of the capacitor. So in this case, we could say that current flows from A to B. Lastly, part E says that the capacitor has a capacitance of 4.0 microfarads. The resistor has resistance of 2.5 mega ohms. And part 1 says to calculate the maximum value of the charging current. Well, to find the maximum current I max, we need to know the supply voltage Vs, which is 100 volts, and the resistance R of the resistor, which is 2.5 mega ohms. And we can rewrite this as 2.5 times 10 to the 6 ohms. We can then write down our equation, Vs equals I max R, which is just a form of V equals IR, where I've put in the labels to keep us right, Vs for supply voltage and I max for the maximum current. So rearranging for I max, we can divide both sides by R to get I max equals Vs over R. Substituting in the numbers gives 100 divided by 2.5 times 10 to the 6, and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 4.0 times 10 to the minus 5 amps. Part 2 says to calculate the charge stored by the capacitor when the capacitor is fully charged. 
So we're trying to find the charge Q. We know that the capacitance C of the capacitor is 4.0 microfarads, which is the same as saying 4.0 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. And lastly, the potential difference across the capacitor when it's fully charged is the supply voltage, which is 100 volts. So writing down our equation in terms of charge, capacitance and voltage, we have C equals Q over VC, where I've just put in VC to be the voltage across the capacitor. And then rearranging for Q, we can multiply these two together to get Q equals C VC. And then we can sub in the numbers to get 4.0 times 10 to the minus 6 times 100, which gives an answer of 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. Question 2 says that an RC circuit is one containing a resistor and a capacitor. Part A says to draw the circuit symbol for a capacitor. So your capacitor circuit symbol looks like this, where you've got the two parallel plates connected to some wires. Part B then says to define the term time constant in an RC circuit. Well, we can define this in two ways. So for a charging capacitor, it is the time taken to increase the charge storage to 63% of the difference between initial and full charge. Whereas for a discharging capacitor, the time constant is the time taken for the capacitor to discharge to 37% of its initial charge. Part C then says to show that the time constant RC has units of time, i.e. seconds. So to do this kind of question, we need to consider the units of the different variables, i.e. the units of R and C. And we need to try and show that these units multiply to give seconds. So first of all, resistance R has the units of ohms and capacitance C has the units of farads. So since R is equal to V over I from Ohm's law, then we can rewrite one ohm as equal to one volt per amp. And also since C equals Q over V for capacitance, we can rewrite one farad as equal to one coulomb per volt. And also since Q is equal to IT from the definition of current I equals Q over T, we can rewrite one coulomb for charge Q as equal to one amp second, where amps is the units of current and seconds is the units of time. So therefore I can rewrite this one farad as equal to one coulomb per volt, as one farad equals one coulomb per volt is equal to one amp second per volt, where I'm replacing the coulomb there with amp second because I worked that out here. Now we can multiply the units of R and C together. So we have volts per amp times amp seconds per volt. And we can do this because tau is equal to R times C. And if we do this, you can see the V's on the top and bottom will cancel out and so will the A's. So this leaves us with S on the top, which is seconds. So there's our units of seconds. Question 3 says that a fully charged 1000 microfarad capacitor discharges through a 10 kilo ohm resistor till 37% of its original charge remains. Calculate the time constant for the capacitor. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the time constant tau. We know that R, the resistance, is 10 kilo ohms, which is the same as 10 times 10 to the 3 ohms. We know that capacitance C is 1000 microfarads, which is the same as 1000 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. And then writing down our equation, we have tau equals RC. Substituting in the numbers gives 10 times 10 to the 3 times 1000 times 10 to the minus 6 and putting that into your calculator gives a final answer of 10 seconds. Question 4 says that a circuit contains an 8400 microfarad capacitor and resistor. The circuit has a time constant of 4.2 seconds. Calculate the value of the resistor, i.e. the resistance of the resistor. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the resistance R. We know that capacitance C is 8400 microfarads and we can rewrite that as 8400 times 10 to the minus 6 farads and tau, the time constant, is 4.2 seconds. So writing down our equation, we have tau equals RC and now rearranging for R, we get R equals tau over C, just dividing both sides by C and then we can sub in the numbers to get 4.2 divided by 8400 times 10 to the minus 6 which gives a final answer of 500 ohms. Question 5 says that a 220 microfarad capacitor is connected to a 150 volt supply and is fully charged. It is then discharged through a 5.0 kilo ohm resistor. Part A says to calculate the time constant for the circuit. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find tau. We know that R is 5.0 kilo ohms, which can be rewritten as 5 times 10 to the 3 ohms. And C, the capacitance is 220 microfarads, which can be rewritten as 220 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. So writing down our equation, we have tau equals RC, substituting in the numbers gives 5 times 10 to the 3 times 220 times 10 to the minus 6, which gives a final answer once you put it into your calculator of 1.1 seconds. Part B says how long will it take for the voltage across the capacitor to drop to 7.6 volts? So initially it's at 150 volts across the capacitor and we want to know how long it's going to take to drop to 7.6 volts. So we need to use the time constant that we've just worked out in part A in order to do this question. And what we're going to do is find how many time constants it takes for 150 volts to fall to 7.6 volts. So firstly, because the capacitor is discharging, we should know that the time constant is the time taken for the voltage or potential difference across the capacitor 
to drop to 37% of its original value. So we can firstly find 37% of 150 volts, which is the same as doing 0 0.37 times 150, which gives an answer of 55.5 volts. However, this is still higher than 7.6 volts, so that is the same as one time constant, but there is obviously more than one time constant involved because we're not quite at 7.6 volts yet. So let's do 37% of that answer, 55.5 volts, which is the same as 0 0.37 times 55.5, which gives 20.5 volts. We're still not at 7.6 volts though, so I'm going to do that again. 37% of 20.5 volts, that answer there, is the same as 0 0.37 times 20.5, and if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 7.6 volts if you round it. And so you'll see that we've arrived at this 7.6 volts, so I can say that I've used three time constants here. So therefore, we can say that the time taken is equal to 3 times the time constant, which is 3 times 1.1 seconds, which is 3.3 seconds. Lastly, question 6 says that some pupils are investigating the charging and discharging of a capacitor. They plot a graph of the voltage across the capacitor VC against time as the capacitor discharges, as shown below. So we have the reading on VC in volts here on the y-axis against the time in seconds, and it's a discharging graph. It then says to use the graph to determine the time constant for the circuit. Well, here we need to use our knowledge of how to find the time constant from a graph. And because the capacitor is discharging and we have this exponentially decreasing curve, then we're interested in the value at 37% of the maximum voltage across the capacitor here. So we can say the time constant tau is the time for VC to reach 37% of its initial value. And its initial value is 6 volts. So that's the same as 37% of 6 volts, which is the same as writing 0 0.37 times 6, which gives you 2.2 volts once you put it into your calculator. So from the graph, if we put a mark at 2.2 volts roughly, and then draw a straight line along to the curve, and then a straight line down, then you'll see that we have roughly 12.5 seconds as our time constant, that chunk of time there. So we could say that T at 2.2 volts is equal to 12.5 seconds. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.